Today everyone, today I'll be discussing performance of criteria. So, performance of criteria are what you look for in students' responses to evaluate their progress towards meeting the learning target. It also serves as a basis for evaluating the quality of student work and it is also a summary of the essential qualities of student proficiency. Meaning, um, performance criteria are dimension or traits in products or performance that are used to illustrate and define understanding or reasoning and proficiency of the learner. To better understand, let's further discuss the types of criteria. So next one is we will have a checklist. So checklist is a simple listing of the criteria or dimension and you will simply check whether or not each criterion was met or each dimension uh, demonstrated. And also checklists are good for evaluating a sequence of steps that are required. And for checklists, it is only a yes or no type of decision. Example is checklist for evaluating a PowerPoint presentation. As you can see, there's two columns, one for yes and one for no. And beside of the number are the description or the uh, criteria so for this one you'll just have to check either um, the PowerPoint presentation able to um, map the guidelines or the um, objection or the, um, yep, the direction or the goal of the presentation next is rating scale so rating scale used to indicate the degree to which a particular dimension is present and it is beyond just a simple yes or no and also rating scale it provides a way to record and communicate qualitatively with different levels of performance of the learners and it also have several types of rating scales we have numerical qualitative and numerical and qualitative combined next is numerical so numerical rating scale use numbers on a continuum to indicate different levels of proficiency um, in terms of frequency or equality. Uh, the number of points on the scale can vary from as few as 2, 2 points to 10 points or more. Also, numerical is a number of points which is determined on the basis of the decision that will be made. So, for example, we have um, complete understanding of the problem. The highest point is 5 and the lowest point is 1 which is no understanding of the problem. Next is little or no organization. The lowest point is 1 and the highest point is 7 which is clear and complete organization. However, if you're going to use the scale to just indicate low, medium, or high, then 3 points will be sufficient. For example, uh, emergent reader, the lowest point is 1 and the highest point is 3 which is fluent reader qualitative so qualitative we use verbal description to indicate students performance um, qualitative rating scale has two types of qualitative descriptor first it indicates the different graduation of the dimension so it is like a one liner a uh, one-sided rating scale in which it provide only a minimal never uh, partial seldom or occasionally type of rating uh, qualitative descriptor uh, it includes a graduation of the criteria and some indication of how performance compares to established standards and also this is the most frequently used type of rating skill for performance assessment because it shows uh, it is a rating skills that also provide feedback at the same time for example um, it needs improvement uh, fully developed um, proficient it's still developing just like that. For the last type of qualitative rating scale is the numerical or qual numerical and qualitative um, combined. So they are combined together. So as you can see on the example, uh, we have a qualitative, we also have a quantitative scale and also there's a category description. It means that aside from providing a numerical scale, you are also providing a description regarding for uh, what's the reason why you provide that specific rating scale this type of criteria is called rubric so most common and most effective way to score performance assessment according to lane 2013 so rubrics is a scoring guide that includes a scale that span different level of competencies 
and also within the table are descriptions of how teacher differentiate between different scale points for each criteria. According also to uh, Wiggins 1998, following this question help understand the functions of rubrics, which means that uh, in order to create a um, better or a good rubric, you should able to answer this uh, specific or four types of guide questions. So number one, by what criteria should performance be judged? Number two, what should we look for to judge? Number three, what does the range in the quality of their performance look like? And number four, how should a different level of quality be described and distinguished from one another? So with this guided, uh, with this guide questions, we will able to uh, create a rubric and determine what specific um, performance should we need to be judged and needs to have a rubric. In order for us to uh, further understand, so we have an example. So if a teacher is evaluating the logic of an argument, uh, one of the criteria could be the trustworthiness and relevance of supporting facts. So this is the uh, example of rubrics that might be created with this um, given uh, situation. So the different levels of quality for those criteria could be expressed as follows. So number one, uh, we can um, uh, if, it has, if it doesn't have any supporting facts, um, it could also be um, criticized as facts presented, however, have weak trustworthiness and relevance. It could also have fact presented, have acceptable trustworthiness and relevance, and lastly, facts presented are clearly trustworthy and relevant so this is the uh, one example of rubrics where a given sit where, where there is a given situation and then there's a equivalent um different levels of quality or what we call the rubrics next one will be developing rubrics. so rubrics are developed by combining several different procedures according to galavan 2009 and swartz and kenny 2008. So um, aside from the procedures that we've talked about earlier, which is the checklist, um, the um, rating scale, the numerical, numer uh, numeral rating scale, qualitative ra rating scale, there's also other approaches that are uh, being suggested. Uh, from these approaches, uh, you just only need to gather um, performance sample and determine the characteristic of the works that distinguish effective from ineffective. So the sample could be from student as well as a so-called expert in that area. So you could start by putting a group of student group of student as a sample and then each student should have a different levels of performance because from with that you will examine and distinguish them one by one. Then once you're able to identify the characteristic, the characteristic will then be your basis for the dimension of your rating scale. So uh, this another approach would also be um, a good way to develop your rubrics. However, it might uh, take you a while to develop a rubric since you have first to gather um, samples or performers that are expert on their, on their area. And then after that, once you're able to gather the data, you'll need also to present it to everyone and it should be approved by everyone that the rubrics or the information that you've gathered will be a um, fit to become a rubrics because if it will not then it will be rejected so uh, for me what will be the best um, uh, way to build to create or to develop a rubric is to follow the uh, previous um, discussion that you have which is um, the checklist uh, type of uh, rating scale because from that you'll able to uh, create your rubrics we that also um, guide you since it's already been a step-by-step -step on how to develop a rubric so uh, that's all everyone i hope you've learned something from our discussion today thank you